Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. New developments in the search for Lexington's latest murder suspects. I'll explain coming up. A grand jury will hear the case of a UK football player accused of raping another student. It's a beautiful look outside. Finally, a lot of sunshine to deal with, and we're going to hold on to that for quite some time. We'll talk all about this forecast heading off into your weekend because your weekend looks phenomenal. That comes up in just a few minutes. WKYT News at Noon starts right now. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Barbara Bailey. And I'm Bill Bryant. Here's what's happening at noon. Three people are now charged in Lexington's latest murder. 19-year-old Nathan Miller, 20-year-old Savan Thompson, and a juvenile are charged with complicity to commit murder. Miller and the juvenile are behind bars at midday, and a warrant has now been issued for Thompson. And they're accused in connection to the shooting death of Jeffrey Adams at an apartment complex in the Winburn area last week. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel has the latest on the investigation. It's our top story at noon. Whitney. Police have arrested a teenager and a juvenile in connection with Lexington's latest murder, but officers are now searching for a third suspect. 19-year-old Nathan Miller and a juvenile are already behind bars facing complicity to commit murder charges. Officers have issued a warrant for 20-year-old Savon Thompson. He, too, will face a complicity to commit murder charge. 19-year-old Jeffrey Adams was shot multiple times around 10.30 Friday morning at an apartment complex on McCullough Drive in the Winburn area. Firefighters found Adams lying in a hallway on the second floor. He was pronounced dead at the scene. According to court documents, the suspect arranged to meet with Adams for a drug deal. Police say witnesses heard arguing and then gunshots. Now at this point, it's still unclear who actually fired the shots that killed Adams. In Lexington, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. Whitney, thank you. And Miller will be arraigned on his complicity to commit murder charge at 1 o'clock. The case against a UK football player charged with rape is moving forward. Freshman Lloyd Tubman is accused of verbally and physically assaulting a woman earlier this month. He is suspended indefinitely from the ball team. WKYT's Mark Barber is outside the Fayette County Courthouse with more on what happened during this morning's hearing. Lloyd Tubman waived his right to a preliminary hearing and is now sending the rape case on to a grand jury. Walking out of the courtroom surrounded by family, the UK freshman refused to answer questions. Any comment about the rape allegations? Judge Megan Lake Thornton said a detective was going to be called as a witness during the preliminary hearing, but because the hearing was waived, there was no testimony. The defensive lineman is suspended from UK's football team after being charged with first degree rape. Investigators say Tubman attacked an acquaintance on October 2nd when he was visiting her in her dorm room on UK's campus. An arrest citation states that Tubman verbally and physically assaulted the woman and then forced her to have sex. We're told the woman called 911 after the six foot three, 250 pound freshman left. Tubman pleaded not guilty at his arraignment earlier this month. He was ordered to have no contact with the woman and to move back to Louisville to live with his parents. Because Tubman has not been arrested before, he was released on a $10,000 bond. I'm told the next time the grand jury meets, they will review the case and decide if an indictment will be filed against Tubman. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And the Commonwealth's attorney is telling us that if an indictment is handed down, it will come within 60 days. A plane headed to Kentucky didn't make it after an accident at an airport. A spokesperson for the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport says two planes clipped wings on a taxiway last night. It involved a Compass Airlines flight that was heading to Louisville and a Delta flight going out to Los Angeles. Both planes returned to the terminal and passengers were told to get off. The incident remains under investigation. It's another chilly day in the bluegrass, so dress warmly if you plan to check out the partial solar eclipse this afternoon. And we have some good news for the weekend. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live now in our first alert weather center with an early look at the forecast. What can you tell us about it, Micah? Well, I think it's going to be a good looking day. I mean, we really go into the afternoon coming from the 40s this morning, mid to upper 40s. Now we're in the mid 50s, low 50s in some locations, so it's a chilly day. There's no doubt, but here's the deal. I mean, yesterday um, in some of these locations, we were sitting there in the lower 50s. 
But we didn't have the sunny skies, and now we have that, it makes it feel that much better. There's live sky camera on the shot. Just a beautiful look outside. And remember, as we head into the afternoon, right around 550, we have that partial solar eclipse. It's going to be pretty cool to see. And I think uh, with skies like this, it'll be easy to see too. So all in all, I, let's call it fairly nice. Yeah, it's still on the cool side, but the sunshine really does help. And once that sun sets, it kind of turn cool once again. We'll go through the forecast the next few days off into your weekend. It looks much better and feels much better. We get the 60s and even possibly some 70s. I'll show you that in about 10 minutes. Micah, thank you. A group working to draw new school boundaries for the Fayette County school system will meet later today. The meeting was supposed to happen earlier this month, but had to be rescheduled. A 30 person committee is working on a plan to redraw boundaries to include two new elementary schools and a new high school slated to open in 2016. That plan is expected to be submitted early next year. Today's meeting will be held at 4 o'clock at the library at Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. We expect to get a first look at the new Shriners Hospital for Children this afternoon. Two years ago, Shriners announced it will be moving from its location on Richmond Road to the UK campus. It follows an agreement between Shriners and UK Healthcare. Shriners Hospital will launch the public phase of the project at 1 o'clock, where leaders will show off renderings of the new facility. Construction's scheduled to begin next year. Well, Saturday is going to be a big day in the bluegrass. The Kentucky Wildcats football team playing in a premier matchup on national TV as they take on number one ranked Mississippi State. And it's also the final day of Keeneland's fall meet. The track will hold a daily double tailgate watch party that'll be on the hill, and tailgaters will be able to watch both live racing and the UK football game on big screen TVs. True Kentucky. Oh, <laughs> right absolutely. What Saturday. a weekend. A Southern Kentucky football player who beat the odds is the subject of a new movie that's making its world premiere tonight. 23 Blast is about Corbin High School football player Travis Freeman. He played during the 1990s despite being blind. WKYT's Rebecca Smith is at the Kentucky Theater now with a preview. Rebecca. Tonight at 7 o'clock, this auditorium will be full of people screening the movie 23 Blast. It really has a deeper significance than just a football movie. Travis Freeman defied the odds as a blind football player from Corbin. His story hits the big screen at 600 movie theaters in the U.S. this weekend. You'll likely recognize the film's director, Dylan Baker, from his work on Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, The Good Wife, or Secretariat, among many others. Freeman, a humble Kentucky boy, never dreamed of all the attention he's receiving now. We all have um, things that we, we deal with, and I want people to realize that that disability does not equal inability. You know, we made it here in Corbin. It was t purely independent. We just raised the money ourselves. We don't have any kind of studio connection. Uh, now the Hollywood Reporter has re reviewed us. So we hope that we can uh, uh, make some people uh, aware of our film. Again, the special screening for 23 Blast takes place tonight at 7 o'clock at the Kentucky Theater. It opens nationwide tomorrow night. Reporting in downtown Lexington, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Thank you, Rebecca. And there are still tickets available. All the proceeds will go to visually impaired preschool services.